Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube video channel and today we are um, working with the series of power system analysis classes and we have been working with short circuit analysis uh, specifically, uh, if you are watching this video, it's because you have an uh, interest on unsymmetrical faults, okay? And today, this is the, 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 this is the fifth video. This is example 3.5, and it's dedicated to, um, it's dedicated to a double line to ground uh, short circuit, okay? Um, as you can see here, uh, we have a single line diagram and this is the power system that we have been using uh, since example 3.1. Uh, I highly suggest if you are interested in of, of attempting this example, please uh, go and watch the video uh, uh, of example 3.1 because over there we run many calculations that we will need now, okay? For instance, in video in example 3.1, we calculate the per unit values and also uh, we calculate the, the uh, sequence network, positive, negative, and zero sequence networks. And then because we are interested on this bus bar number two, because it's where the faults are happening. Uh, in example 3.1, we calculate the Thevenin equivalent model for positive, negative, and zero sequence, okay? We will be using those networks. We will be using those Thevenin equivalent models in this example. If you have any doubt, please go back to example 3.1 and you can see all the calculations, okay? Well, what is the job today? The job today is we are working with a line-to-line -line ground fault, okay? In this, case, in this case, we are having a line-to-line -to, -line to ground, okay? Line-to-line -line ground fault in this case this is happening between phase v and c and of course ground and that is happening at bus bar two okay and what i'm trying to say is we are having the fault here okay good and there are three interesting questions. This is a relative long problem because the first question is probably very simple calculate the subtraction fault okay for each phase and then uh, there is another question calculate the neutral current and this is the neutral current okay this is v and i see and the third question the third question is calculate the contribution uh, to the fault coming from the motor coming from the motor and also coming from the generation from the transmission line to be honest uh, the current moving through the transmission line is really coming from the generator that is the the reason that i am using a subscript with the letter g for this current i'm uh, using the letter g here as a subscript because um okay the current is is coming through the transmission line i mean when you have the fall here you have two contribution one contribution coming from the motor but also you have one contribution coming here through this transformer through this transmission line through this transformer but the source that is providing that contribution is the synchronous generator okay something that is extremely important okay when we have delta star connected transformers there is a phase shift okay uh, the phase shift is affecting positive and negative sequence it's not affecting zero sequence however the good news for all my students in this example example 3 uh, 3.5 we are neglecting, we are neglecting the phase shift when the current is moving, when the positive and negative current is moving through those transformers, delta star connected transformers, okay? Okay, let's jump into the solution of this problem, okay? Okay, uh, all of you have spent time uh, watching my videos about um, uh, symmetrical components. <laughs> and also, uh, you watch my video about uh, unsymmetrical faults. 
you are taught at on that. And what I need that you understand is that we, when we have a line to line to ground fault, in this case, we need to connect the positive, negative, and zero sequence, all of them in parallel, okay? And I believe that is clear for you. Here we have the positive sequence, then we have the negative sequence, then we have the zero sequence, all of them, they are interconnected in parallel connection, okay? And uh, that is coming, that is coming from the theory, from the theory of symmetrical components, okay? You can watch the video, the lecture about that. But here, what we need is the practicality. We need to interconnect positive, negative, and zero sequence in parallel, okay? What is the next step? Well, all my students, they are aware about circuit analysis. And in this case, the circuit analysis is extremely simple because you can say that the positive sequence current, the positive sequence current is coming. You have here a parallel connection between negative and zero sequence. And you have here this in series with that parallel. Yeah. And at the end, the positive sequence is the ratio between the voltage that is exciting the system, and that is the Thevenin voltage or the voltage coming from the pre fall condition 1.05. You can see that value at the sample 3.1. And what I am saying is that the Thevenin, uh, that the positive current can be obtained easily like the ratio or the division between voltage and the total uh, Thevenin impedance. And the Thevenin impedance, the equivalent impedance will be positive sequence plus the parallel, plus the parallel between negative and zero sequence, okay? Uh, numerically, you can put the numbers over there and you can get that the positive sequence in this case is minus J4.54, okay, per unit. Okay, extremely simple, it's very simple, we can obtain that, but the next step is a bit more complicated, okay? Because right now, what we need to do, what we need to do is... Okay, in this configuration, we are working in parallel. Now we know the positive sequence current that is coming here, coming out from the positive sequence model. And now the question is, how much is this negative se uh, sequence current? And what is the value of this zero sequence current, okay? What you need to do is extremely simple. All my students, they are good in applying cor uh, current divider rule. You can apply current divider rule, or if you wish, you can use any other um, uh, circuit analysis tool, and you can obtain, numerically, you can obtain the negative sequence current. In this case, it's J2.87. And over here, you can see the negative sequence current is J1.67, okay? Okay, again, you can use, if you want, a current divider, but if you prefer to use any other tool, you are free to use it, okay? What we need is to obtain the numerical values for the positive sequence, the negative sequence, and the zero sequence current, okay? When we have those values, well, again, I told you many times, uh, I love I love the symmetrical components, positive and negative, uh, positive and negative sequence. They are very useful. However, in real life, what I need is the asymmetrical components that is A, B, C, and A, B, C is obtained by using this very basic equation over here. We substitute the value for positive, negative, and zero sequence. And they are not surprised we got here. Let me put a bit higher here. And we obtain that the current on the line A 
E, sorry, in the line A is zero. To be honest, to be honest, that is a result that I was expecting. This is a result that we were expecting. And the reason that we were expecting this result is because we are working with a double line to ground fault and the line A is not involved. And because the line A is not involved, the current is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, I am afraid that at this moment I don't have any shortcut for my students. Uh, we will use the matrix form for the double line to ground fault in order to obtain the line currents A, B, C, okay? But again, per unit values, yes, they are useful. They allow me to run calculations inside the power system, but there is a problem. In real life, what we are using, in real life, what we are using are the amps. What I'm telling you is that for real life, for specifying circuit breakers, for specifying uh, any kind of bush bars, we need is the current in amps, okay? What I will do now is basically, uh, I will multiply the per unit values that we already got and multiply those per unit values using the base. You can see over there 4.1 kilo amps is the base and we are working with the base at 13.8 kb you can see the calculation in example 3.1 we are using 30.3 kilo uh, kilo volts because that is the location of the uh, bus bar number two okay uh, as you can see over there as you can see over there the numerical results we have uh, short circuit uh, current on the line B that numerically numerically is equal to 28 28.8 kilo amps and that is the current at 13.8 kb okay it's good idea to my students please try to keep track about the voltage that you are referring when you are talking about kilo amps it's not the same low voltage currents than high voltage currents okay okay now what we will do what we will do is now what we want to do is let's calculate what is the current that is moving at the neutral point okay and in this case is very simple okay because all my students must remember, let me let me let me put here a, a piece of paper. You must remember we have the line here, A, we have B, and we have C, okay? And what is the fault that is happening here? Well, in this situation, we have a fault that is interconnecting uh, B and C, yeah? And this is the current B, and this is the current C. They are going here, and finally they are going to the neutral point and going, and this is IB plus IC, okay? <coughs> it's simple to see, it's simple to see, all my students can calculate that value, and what you need to do is adding those values over here, B and C, or you can use three times the zero sequence component. And from there, using again the base current of the 13.8 area, I mean, using the base current that is 4.1 kilo amps, we obtain that the neutral current, the, going, the current going through the neutral point is 21 kilo amps, okay? Okay, very simple. Now, to be honest, it's when the situation about symmetrical components start to be very interesting, okay? Because right now, what we will do is we are interested, we are interested on calculating the short circuit contributions, okay? We are interested on calculating short circuits contribution, okay? 
uh, we want to calculate short circuit contributions when there is a fault, a symmetrical fault, line-to-line uh, -line ground fault. And to be honest, let me start with the first one that is the zero sequence component, okay? The zero sequence component, the zero sequence component is coming out here. This is the zero sequence component. And the zero sequence component, a boost bar number two, you must, you, you, you must be able to see that the zero sequence component is equal to the current coming from the generator, the contribution coming from the generator, plus the contribution coming from the motor, okay? However, uh, in example 3.1, we, uh, we define the zero sequence network and you must remember that we have those delta start transformer. And in zero sequence, in zero sequence network, the delta star transformer here is not allowing the uh, circulation of the zero sequence component. What I'm trying to see is you can see a very important open circuit here at boost bar number two that is disconnecting all the devices on the left hand side. All the left um, side of this circuit is not needed. And at the end, what I need to see is that the zero sequence component that is coming out from the zero sequence network is numerically equal is numerical equal to the um, zero sequence contribution coming from the motor okay it's extremely simple over there you can see the number that is the zero sequence contribution coming from the motor the generator in this case it's impossible to provide any zero sequence um, contribution and the reason that the generator is not contributing is because this delta star connection is not allowing the freely circulation of zero components between the high voltage side and the low voltage side okay okay now let's jump into the positive sequence okay positive sequence is extremely simple over there you can see the positive sequence network uh, we create this sequ uh, positive sequence network at the uh, example 3.1 and you can see there is a clear positive sequence contribution coming from the motor and there is a clear um, short circuit contribution coming from the generator, okay? When both of them arrive here to the boost bar number two, you are able to see that the positive sequence current should be equal to the positive sequence contribution coming from the generator plus the positive sequence contribution coming from the motor, okay? It's very simple, it's simple to see. All my students, they can see that, okay? Okay, but now, what is the problem? Well, what we need to do is straight away, we need to calculate the contributions coming from the generator and the motor, and using the positive sequence network, my students, they can use, they can use any kind of circuit analysis tool for instance you can use current divider rule or you can use any other of circuit analysis tool and using the positive sequence network and using for instance in this case current divider rule you can obtain the positive sequence contribution coming from the generator and you can calculate also using current divider rule the current contribution the positive sequence contribution coming from the generator uh, sorry from the motor contribution coming in positive sequence from the generator 
and this is the positive sequence contribution coming from the motor, okay? What is the next step? Wow, the next step is extremely interesting, extremely important. And what we need to do right now, what we need to do right now is going to the negative sequence, okay? A similar approach can be used uh, at the um, negative sequence. I didn't present here uh, the negative sequence network, but again, the negative current, the negative sequence current, it will be the sum of both contribution. The negative, the negative sequence current should be equal to the contribution coming from the generator and coming from the motor. And what you need to remember from the sample 3.1 is there is a slightly changes, there are a slightly changes on the negative sequence network because the generator has a um, reactance of 0 0.17 and the motor has a slightly high negative sequence um, reactance of 0 0.21, okay? Now my students, they are able to use, they are able to use, again, current divider rule. And using current divider rule, they are able to calculate the motor and generator contributions, okay? Inside the negative sequence network. Well, now what we need to do is again, we need to move from symmetrical components. Symmetrical components, they are beautiful, but in real life, we are dealing with ABC currents. And to move from ABC currents to real world, sorry, from positive negative currents to real world ABC, we need to use the matrix transformation. And what we will do is, Put the numbers that we calculate before, I mean, to get the current contribution ABC, we use the current contribution at zero positive and negative sequence, okay? Now you can see on the right hand side, we are obtaining, this is the phase A, B and C currents in this beautiful uh, generator, coming from this beautiful generator. And down here, you can see I am using zero positive and negative sequence coming from the contribution of the beautiful motor. And when we put the number together on the right hand side, on the right hand side, we have, we have the contribution, ABC contribution coming from the motor. But again, we are using here per unit values. And the last step here in this problem is converting those values, converting those values from the per unit values into the, into the real world by multiplying by the appropriate uh, base, okay? Some of you must be uh, thinking about what is the proper base that we need to use, okay? Because the short circuit is happening at bus bar number two, and the bus bar number two, the nominal voltage is 13.8 kV. We need to use the current base that we have already defined, okay? 4.1 kiloamps. Now we multiply, we multiply both sides, both sides using the base current, and using the base current, we can see here the total current contribution coming from the motor, uh, sorry, from the generator. And this is the current contribution coming from the, uh, from the uh, motor, okay? Something that you must realize, I don't know if you can see, but in this case, the coming, the current, the, cor the current contribution coming from the generator, this one, this number is equal to this number over here, but this is minus 90 degree, and this is a uh, plus 90 degree. When when they are arrived to boost bar number two, one is coming from one side, the other one is coming from the other side. Both of them zoom and go to the fault point. 
And if you sum those currents using Kirchhoff current law, you will get that the full current at the point is zero at the phase A. And that is an expected result because this is a double line to ground fault, okay? Okay, this example has been a bit more complicated to the previous one because here we want to calculate um, contributions coming from any generator or motor inside the network. When you need to calculate, when you need to calculate variables inside the sequence networks, you can you can you can use a current divider rule or any other circuit analysis tool that you know. Okay, um, this is a bit more complicated because you need to go inside the sequence inside the sequence network and obtain the variable. And then you need to use the transformation in order to get the ABC results, okay? But what I want that you realize is this example uh, 3.5 is a very important example for you. However, there is something that we need to be aware. In this example, Delta star transformers, we assume that there is not, there is not faith chief when you move from delta to star or from a star to delta and that is non-realistic that was used here because it was the very simple way that allowed me to show you how to run the calculations how to perform calculations and obtain uh, contributions coming from generators or motors okay but right now to be honest, we need to focus, we need to focus realistically, we need to focus is on considering this phase chief. And right now, I would like to invite you to see, to watch, sorry, the last video of this series. And the last video of this series is the example 3.6, and is dealing with the phase chief between delta and a star connection in a two winding transformer when there is a unsymmetrical fault okay thank you very much for your uh for your um for watching the video thank you very much for all your comments and thanks